Order. We have with us Councilman Nelson, Councilwoman Sierra, Vice Mayor Burgess, Councilwoman Lobos, and Councilman McCormick. Ms. Waldman is absent. Thank you. I'll entertain a motion to approve April 29, 2008 minutes, tab 1. I'll move them, Mayor. I'll second. The minutes have been properly moved and seconded. Any comments or questions on the minutes? All in favor say aye. 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 The ayes carry. Thank you. We have an ordinance establishing the Southwest Area Advisory Committee, tab 2. I'll move it. It's I'll second. Been, it's been properly moved and seconded. I read the ordinance. It's good. Nice, nice and simple to the point. <clears throat> Any comments or questions? Just one quick comment, if I may. Um, Certainly. Uh, this is kind of along the lines of the advisory homestead advisory committee. If uh, Mr. McCormick or Councilman McCormick needs or feels that, that we could work together, we uh, would be glad to. Once we get going here, it's, we should be bringing full our full membership should be full by the next. Uh, um, full me a council meeting that we have next week so therefore we will be ready to roll and anything that we can help them with is that's one of the important areas to get cleaned up and, and, and take care of in the city we'll be glad to help thank you very much and that's why I thank you very well as much that's one of the linkages that I want to establish between the southwest and the beautification committee because there's a lot of issues that we need to address in that section as far as beautification so I thank you for welcoming the southwest um advisory to your end of the bargain <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Any further comments? All in favor say aye. Aye. The ayes carry. Thank you. C, item C, Community Development Block Grant Program. So I'll move it. Mr. Shahada, any comments? Mayor, council members, but quickly, uh, since the city of Homestead population exceeded the 50,000, we became CDBG eligible community, and we will be receiving uh, $781,000 and five nine three, you know, to be exact, uh, in October 1st. Uh, as a prerequisite, we have to have the community participation plan. Uh, this is what you have in front of you today. We advertised in the newspaper for community participation for the 27th to take input from the community and they could submit their comments in writing to Lauren and in the, in the advertisement has the emails and all that uh, good information or they could call her also and uh, ask the questions. But in general, these are one of the steps or prerequisites for the plan to be approved and submitted to the federal government. In terms of, in terms of projects, all the CDB, when we get the money, all the CDBG eligible projects get, uh, are, are eligible to be funded by this money. Uh, at some point when we submit to the federal government the information, we have to submit capital project plan or, uh, or, or needs. It doesn't have to be carved in stone, we could always change things, but we, we are going to submit it at some point. Uh, uh, Laura, I don't know if you want to add anything to this, but it's just... Uh, uh, Mayor and Council, the, the planning process is going to take over the next three months and everything is due to the United States Department of um, Housing and Urban Development on August 15th. So that's when our plan will be turned into them. Thank you. Any other, any comments or questions? <coughs> um, Mayor Bell, I just have one more question. I know uh, Mr. Shahad, I spoke to you earlier and you said that because we had reached that population of 50,000 that we now, this is an entitlement that we have. So is it going to be the same amount every year or does it increase? I mean, what? The, the formula is population based. So as our population continues to increase, the assumption is that our funds would increase over the next year. Um, we won't know until we get that official letter from HUD, usually in January, that tells us what our, ne our next year's funding would be. So, thank you. Thank you. All in favor say aye. Aye. The ayes carry. Thank you. Finance Enterprise Committee, Councilwoman Lobos. Thank you, Mayor Bell. Tab 4, uh, bid 200802, mitigation maintenance. I'll move it. I'll second. Thank you. And um, I think before we start, I just want to say that the green sheet really had a lot of details, and I think that what staff has done is you've kind of picked up on how we ask the questions. Whenever we're getting ready to approve a new vendor, the questions are, who is the current vendor? How does it compare to last year? So I really have to say that it was 
detailed and answered. You anticipated most of the time what we asked anyway. So that was good. Um, one of the questions that I did have for Mr. Shahada was, you know, to give me a little bit of information on how the previous vendor was rated poor. And so, Mr. Shahada, when you speak about this, can you include that in your comments, please? Sure. Uh, the previous vendor has been doing work with us for several years now, but unfortunately, towards the end, or the in the past year or so, they are not performing to our expectations. And as you all know, this is uh, we have two pieces of property. One of them is 160 acres uh, uh, east of 137th Avenue, and about 300 acres west of 137th Avenue. These are environmentally sensitive wetlands. Uh, to comply with all the requirements is an absolute must. And unfortunately, the vendor did not, and really if it wasn't for the relationship we have with these environmental agencies and our consultants' relationship, we could have found ourselves in very hot water. He did not uh, respond the, as needed. Uh, luckily, with this submittal, uh, even though their price was the lowest, but in the, in the view of the purchasing department and the review committee, they were not responsible and responsive. Therefore, they will not qualify to even be listed here. You see them in the, in the table that they were uh, included, but uh, they are not responsive responsible. So therefore, we are recommending the lowest one, which is the one we, are, we have in, uh, in Utrechem Incorporated. Thank you, Mr. Shahada. Are there any other, are there any other questions yes, or comments? Sure. Mayor Bell? Thank you. Mr. Shahada, when I was reading this also, um, when, we, when we give somebody a particular delegation of a poor performer, do we then remove them from the list to, to go out to bid the next time? Because um, why would we continue to um, solicit them if, if we've already determined that they perform poorly? Uh, I'm going to defer to Brian, but I, I just want you to know that something I'm implementing myself, and I have Brian and Cooper Smith working on it in coordination with Joanna. I want, I want to have a monthly evaluation forms filled by directors and submitted to purchasing about the performance of vendors. And also when we have a contractor, the same thing will apply to contractors. And after they even finish, we want to make sure that everything they built is, is, is being delivering the way it was supposed to be. And these, these evaluations, if we have everything recorded, I guarantee you we can disqualify them based on performance. That would be wonderful because this is one, but there are others. Oh, okay, of course. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Mr. Bryant, do you want to say anything? Uh, Mayor, members of council, um, just to elaborate on my uh, that's correct. We have a post-project survey that we actually have for the departments for construction projects. And when they, the project comes to fruition, we ask that the departments complete it, rate them, and then we can put it on our web page or on eDocs that they can go back when we do an evaluation in the future that they'll look and see how they perform for the city based on that, and they can help to make the recommendations. Also, Mr. Shah had recommended to me also um, just recently that we uh, quarterly or make um, evaluations of vendors in process as well. So we'll be sending out surveys out throughout the year for this so that we can catch this in a timely manner instead of letting them continue to perform through the contract. So we, you know, we've had different contracts for different things that, you know, if it was a year or time frame, hopefully within a quarter we'd be able to grab it and make the corrections. If not, terminate them and rebid it. Thank you. Are there any other questions or comments? Can I just add one thing? Sure, just, Mr. Just a follow-up to something like this. We, we are experiencing something with the uniform uh, con contractor or vendor to provide us with uniforms, and they're not performing, and we are going to terminate their contract and go out for bed. We're not going to wait until the year is over, and so they, they, they need to deliver services. Great. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. We move on to tab five, and this is Rodriguez and Quiroga Furniture Selection Specification of Services. Uh, Mayor and Council. Uh, uh, can I, I'm sorry, okay. Mr. Shahada, can I? I'll move it. So I'll second. Thank you. Go ahead, Mr. Shahada. Madam Chair, I'm, I'm just too excited, so please forgive me. <laughs> You're forgiven. Yeah. Go ahead. R&Q are the consultants who are doing the design of the city hall for us. 
and uh, me and Joanna met with them actually Monday morning and we went over the furniture selection in terms of philosophy and what we like to see in City Hall for all the offices. Uh, initially they submitted a scope of services for us where they practically go out and bid the uh, the furniture and start go through the selection process and Brian came to us and said this is in a, in a state contract why do we have to reinvent the wheel and, and I can't really describe the services what was much higher than this because it's practically reinventing the wheel and the, the, consult, the consultants like the idea, we like the idea, so we, we changed the scope services to just help us with selection of the furniture. And of course, they have, the task will be, we select the furniture, they have to make sure it's all going to fit into the buildings and fill the spaces we have, so they still have work to be done. The way we have it done with them is not to exceed the $50,000 you see here, so it's going to be hourly basis, but not to exceed $50,000. I can tell you they're doing an outstanding job for us, and uh, you would be very pleased with the, with the things we're going to have in New City Hall. Um, are there any comments? Mayor, did you want to go? Vice Mayor, go ahead. Yes. Can you say that again for me, Mike? <clears throat> you, you and Brian spoke and, and to, to the or Johanna, but Brian brought up the uh, fact of the state contract and explained what they're going to do for us, what steps they're going to continue to do for us. Is it, they're still going to do A through M listed as basic services, you, you, or some of those are taken out of? Do you want to, Brian, please jump in as you need. Do you want to go ahead? Because my point is $50,000 to me is a way high number. Yeah. What we're looking at is, is we ought to be able to have three people in the city in-house that can figure out what kind of furniture we need and vendors that need to come here. I mean, there's more, I guarantee you, the vendors would line up out the door if they thought they could come and sell us stuff. And why we're paying somebody to go somewhere and look at stuff, to me, is, is ludicrous. Vice Mayor, with all respect, I don't think it's that simple. You know, we looked into it ourselves, and you know, in-house, you cannot really do that service because, again, you have to have everything <coughs> done timely. You have the drawings now. I guarantee you we could get vendors to come here and line up out these doors to show uh, us Ms. stuff in Ms. a timely manner. Ms. Potters, why don't you go ahead and explain a little bit about the scopes of services and we can move forward from there. Madam Chair, Council Members. Um, excuse me, I'm not sure I'm going to be interrupted there, am I, Richard? When the, if you've been properly called on and you have the floor, then you should have the floor until you relinquish it. Thank you. Um, Ms. Mr. Weiss, I was just trying to keep order if Ms. Joanna was going to be at, was asked to explain the scope of services, maybe that can answer some of the Vice Mayor's questions and, and that's what we're going to be, And if we're going to be technical, if you have a question, and what I try to do is I try not to be technical, so I let you, if you're going to be technical, the questions from council to staff should go through the chair. So if you have a question of, of the staff, so I, I try not to be technical, but... Well, let's all follow that. Okay. You know, so if you're going to be technical, we're going to be... Now let me go back to, to Ms. Ms. Lobos, and I, I just don't feel, my point is that I don't feel that with, with property values going down and all, and the problems that we're going to have making budgets and all on this, I think we're going to have to cut every corner we can on this new city hall. And I, every $50,000 along the way is going to add up, and I just think that that is a large number to be thrown out there for somebody to pick out furniture. I agree, Vice Mayor. I, at the beginning, when I first read it, and to be very blunt, I called Mr. Shahada and I said, you know, I read Furniture Selection Specification Services, and I went, is this an interior decorator? Is this pretty much what we're doing? Uh, Mr. Shahada, I think it didn't include some of the stuff that you spoke to me about, how technical the selection process is. And what you've talked about is that originally this scope of services and the basic services was going to be way higher than $50,000. It was going to be extensive, and what you did is you went back to them, and you said there are levels of services that can be already done by the county that are being done and so therefore we want to minimize the scope of services to decrease the uh, the funds that are going to be used towards this. So you already extensively analyzed this, you've looked at it, you scrutinized it, and you figured out ways to reduce it. Why don't you at least give us an estimate as to what it was originally and how much you were able to reduce it to? Do you want to was the number of eighty six thousand dollars? Yes. Madam Chair, Council Members, the, the original scope was for approximately $85,000. Um, this is a not to exceed $50,000, and it's an 
on a per hour basis. And everything included in this scope is included. So nothing that is here, Council Member Burgess, nothing that is included in this scope of services wasn't taken out. Everything that you see here will be included in the services. I just, when Mike was speaking, I couldn't understand what he, the one sentence there, I didn't understand what he said. Okay. I also want to make it very clear. You know, I will not bring a scope of service. Vice Mayor, I respect you. You know that. And I'm not trying to create problems here. I will not bring a scope of services that I am not comfortable with in terms of expenditures. And like I said, the initial scope of services for the $85,000 was a lump sum. So, you know, we were going to pay for it regardless. Now we're limited to as needed. We didn't want to keep coming back to Council if we have to go above a lower number. We could have limited to 25, but if they're going to exceed it, we have to come back to Council again. So we agree that it's going to be at $50,000. And I can tell you, Joanna and Brian work very diligently with the consultants to come up with the, you know, how it's going to be handled. And I hope by the end of the day it's going to be $20,000. Mayor Bell, do you have a comment? I do. Thank you. When one first sees an amount or something and they think of furniture selection, they think of a home or they think of something fairly simple. They don't think of an 80,000 square foot city hall. So, Mr. Burgess, please. Thank you. They don't think of an 80,000 square foot city hall. So the scope of services are extensive. And if you look at the green, well, it's not a green sheet. For me, it's a white sheet. If you look at the explanation, you're talking. I'm going to tell you, I'm about as fiscally conservative as it gets and very, very frugal. And I know this is a huge task that's going to require a lot of hours and looking and shopping for the perfect person to actually fill this entire city hall, which is all the offices and the desks and the chairs and all of the furniture and everything that you see. This is not a small task. This could not be done by three people. This could not be done by 15 people. This is something that's going to be needed to be governed properly and appropriately so that the city, the furniture looks beautiful, but it's reasonable and beautiful and lasts for a very, very, very long time. It's very useful, but it's a huge task if you take a look at it with basic services. I mean, I'm going, if you would indulge me for a moment, Ms. Lobos. Go ahead, Mayor Bell. Under basic services, first of all, they have to identify the furniture dealers representing the major contract furniture manufacturers. They have to interview the furniture dealers and discuss the product lines and the price points. They have to select a furniture dealer on the basis of the interviews after that they have done that process. Then they have to specify furniture selections from the dealer's product lines and they have to fit them. They have to visit the dealer's sample installations with the owner. They have to go on and have an on-site visit. They have to review the dealer's specifications, the furniture specifications. They have to review the price quotes. They have to review the dealer's final furniture specifications. They have to direct them. And it goes on and on and on with additional services compensation not to exceed $50,000. I don't know about you, but I don't want to piecemeal our new city hall. I want it to be beautiful. I don't want to have one person doing this style and one person purchasing this style. I want a consistent, very lovely city hall that's going to last us for a long time. And this furniture is going to last us the next 30 years. So this is not anything that has to be done lightly. And when you're talking about a project this expensive and this size, I'm not willing to cheapen it one bit. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Bell. And I'd just like to add another comment as I think about this. I think the overall tone of this council and this, I mean, with the Finance Committee has always been to be very aggressive about cutting back in ways that we need to. And I'll give you an example. The Senior Center. I mean, that project, Mr. Shahada, has been reduced by how much? I mean, almost half of what it was originally proposed. So I think that we've seen that this staff gets where the city council is going. We want to be fiscally conservative. We want to cut out any waste that exists in any of the projects. If there are vendors that are not doing their job but we're paying them anyway, we're asking you to look at that. We do not want to just give away money. We've cut back and we've asked for people to be accountable for the money that is disposed. So I think just overall, the tone of this council is to be fiscally conservative, to look where it needs to be cut, and to eliminate waste where it needs to be eliminated. 
Are there any other comments or questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any? Um, no. Aye? Thank you, Mayor Bill. That's all for the Finance Committee. Thank you. Thank you very much. Public Safety Committee, Councilman Nelson. Thank you, Mayor Bill. Um, Section 4A, uh, Mobile Command Post Vehicle, the uh, final change order, tab 6. Move I'll move it. it. I'll, I'll second it. Thank you. Mike? Mr. Chairman, <coughs> Mayor, Council Members, uh, I think all of you visited the command center when we uh, had races and had the opportunity to go inside and uh, see what we have there. It's a beautiful facility. Uh, when they brought the mobile command center, there were minor tweaking needed uh, to go back and fix it. When they had it fully operational, they, dis they discovered some... Uh, you know, this is a, a one and a half million dollars project and we have an exchange order here for thirty thousand dollars some of it has to do with the equipment overheating transformer so really it's a, it's a minor thing but we don't want to risk the rest of the equipment for this very little change order so i, I know scott bell had the extensive expl explanation here of the green sheet but bottom line is just really minor tweaking to make sure and we did getting credit for all the equipment that did not function as expected so this is an additional uh, money is above and beyond what the original equipment would have. Are there any other questions? All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Item B, renewal of Cisco telephone maintenance contract, tab 7. I'll move it. I'll second. Thank you. Mike, can you tell us about this? Mr. Mr. Chairman, Mayor and Council Members, again this is uh, a company we've been doing with business with for a while in the Police Department and we just want to continue doing the business with them for the, they are part of AT&T now, so just to continue the services we have. Anybody have any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Let me see, U.S. Department of Justice Mutual Aid, tab eight. I'll, I'll, move. Move. I'll second it. Uh, again, this is uh, the police, our police department has been working with the ATF for, for a long time, and this is really just to enter into an agreement. When they use our services in the city, they're going to pay us for the overtime we spend on working with them. I was just talking with Chief Rule about it. Chief, could you tell them also what it, it's going to help us do against uh, the high-powered rifles and, and things of that nature? Yes, uh, thank you. This is uh, an agreement with ATF, and what it, usually we get into agreement, you know, in all honesty, we, we try to do it to benefit the city, uh, not other, other agencies, all the, even though we work with them. But this is basically to, uh, to get the assault rifles and uh, weapons off the street. If, in fact, you know, we want to call someone down here that has uh, an assault rifle or any kind of explosive, uh, to take this federally, we want we uh, became we want to mutual aid with ATF so we can take it federally and also get it off the street because, as you all know, federal laws uh, they're they're very tough and they're, they're strict. And it's uh, not only just for homes, believe it or not. You know, we also they also said that if Forest City needs some help, you know, they would they would also uh, have homes to go down deal with home deal with Forest City weapons and also uh, they would take care of that as well. Thank you. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Let me be the Mirabella Bay Homeowners Association Traffic Control Jurisdiction Agreement, tab 9. I'll move it. I'll second. Thank you. Mike? Uh, this is a standard agreement we normally have with uh, when we have a community. Most of the time it's gated communities and they have private roads for our police department to be able to do uh, a traffic enforcement. Uh, they have to enter into an agreement with us and this is a standard agreement to bear in the past by our attorneys and we have it with several communities and this is really just a continuation. Any questions? I have a question, clarification question. When we go into agreements like this, and, and we have this at our community in Stonebrook as well, is there a way to identify the speed limit that 
the association wants to restrict dur during inside of their private roads or or not really? You said it's, it's the police department? As the police department and the association. So for example, if our association determines that 15 mile per hour is the speed limit we want within our community, is that something that can you guys can cite for? Yes, absolutely. Above and beyond? Because I've noticed that there's some communities that have a five mile an hour speed limit. They use it. Using yeah. the contract, they put in there what they what the specification. Okay, for, I wasn't for sure. I, I believe that that's how we had done it a while back ago. But um, I see there's so much discrepancy from one community to another. Where five miles an hour, if you really try to do it, you're going in neutral. Well, depending on whether it's a. If you're in trouble. Well, <laughs> it pretty much depends on you know the association what what they feel is safe in the okay. area, and also believe it or not, you know it's. it's Pretty much to govern their own people. That's pretty much right. who goes in and out there, and that's right. who that's who, who that's who gets cited as well. Right. You know, the only stipulation is that if whatever speed limit they uh, they establish, they're responsible for the signage. The and the signage is one on the entrance and one on the exit. Or? Um, so what I have understood. The, the agreement says appropriate signage. Okay. Thank you very much for clarification. Thank you. Any other questions? All in favor? Aye. Uh, item E. Floridian Bay Estates 2, Homeowners Association, Traffic Control Jurisdiction Agreement, I'll, Tab I'll 10. Move I'll move it, Council. I'll second. Thank you. This is uh, the, the, the same as before. Are there any other questions? No? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Nelson. Mike Shah, Mr. Shah, do you have any business for us? Uh, Mayor, Council Members, and I don't have any business. Thank you. Anything uh, for the... For the uh, Mr. Nelson, anything for us? I just want to say thank you. Uh, last night I attended the um, retirement party for Colonel Falcon uh, out at Shinobi's Winery. Uh, beautiful place. Uh, uh, they've done great, great things out there. It's just very beautiful. Uh, I'd like to say thank you for that, for the Military Affairs Committee for inviting us out there. Um, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Councilwoman Sierra? No, I have nothing. Thank you. Mr. Burgess? I uh, just want to tell Lieutenant Clot, thank you for everything you've done on that command unit. It was uh, very impressive that day we were out there, and I know it's been a lot of work, and it's your baby, so thank you for everything you've done on it. Councilwoman Alvarez? Nothing from my committee. Ms. Mabel? Councilman McCormick? No comments this week. Ms. Walmart? Thank you. I just want to apologize for being late. I was attending a board meeting for the city, so thank you. Thank you. This concludes the, uh, the Committee of the Whole, and we will be um, having a CRE meeting in a moment. This concludes the Committee of the Whole. Thank you. Did you give us this?